This lovely manhua is titled, I Became the Young Villain's Sister-in-Law. If you love stories like this, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll never miss the next episode. Aliyah's life was not favoring her. She yearned for a new life. But why was Caleb Indigentia, the young black man from the novel, clinging to her, crying and begging her not to divorce his brother? He even asked if she disliked living with him. Aaliyah was perplexed, attempting to reply, but felt awkward. She couldn't reveal that her contract marriage with Cedric Indigentia, the Grand Duke of Indigentia, would soon end. Aaliyah glanced at Cedric, whose face was as stoic as ever, seeking help to extricate her from the situation. Cedric finally spoke telling Caleb not to trouble her. Caleb called out to her, explaining why she couldn't leave. He feared that without her, Cedric would become foolish, revealing that Cedric had even cut his fingers to prevent himself from getting tattooed. Tears streaming from Caleb's eyes, he confessed that he felt scared at night without her and that there was a monster under his bed. With these reasons, he begged her again not to divorce his brother. In truth, Cedric was the strongest person in the world, his wounds were inflicted by over 100 soldiers, and the monster under Caleb's bed was the great evil that would become his limb, as Caleb was destined to be a wizard controlling darkness. Cedric scolded Caleb, telling him to stop making Elia uncomfortable. Elia wondered why Cedric was scolding and getting angry at a small boy and decided to comfort Caleb. However, Cedric grabbed Caleb, pulling him away from Elia, prompting her to exclaim, Excuse me! Cedric glared at Caleb, stating that his actions didn't change anything. Caleb, now angry, gritted his teeth and slapped Cedric's hand off his shoulder, exclaiming that Cedric was noisy and an idiot, the most foolish person he had ever met. He shouted at Cedric, asking how he could abandon and let Elia go. In a fit of rage, Cedric yelled back, revealing that he wasn't letting her go willingly. Elia, confused, intervened, wondering why they were fighting in the first place and what was wrong with them. She had once awoken in an unknown body, shocked by her reflection in the mirror. Realizing she had been reincarnated, she found herself as Elia, a 23-year-old lady with no memories of her past life. Through her diary, she discovered she was an extra character in a novel. Elia looked out the window, seeing only forests, but her smile remained radiant. On a beautiful day, she contemplated going for a walk, pondering the world she was in and the character she possessed. Though uncertain, she saw this possession as an opportunity, and her smile was a testament to her optimism. Elia began exploring the forest, swinging her hands and hopping with joy, feeling like an original story's female lead, free from worries. She greeted a bunny with enthusiasm, saying hello and waving. As the bunny hopped away, she exclaimed and waved it off, jumping up happily with her hands in the air, remarking that the forest was vast and beautiful. As she landed back on her feet, she heard a sound and wondered if another animal was running away. But when she looked back, she saw a young boy being chased by an angry and hungry-looking wolf. Without hesitation, she began running towards the boy, shouting to get his attention and telling him to come to her. Finally getting the boy's attention, Elia assured him and told him to hurry. The boy ran into her wide-open arms and she positioned him behind her, wondering if she could protect him. Elia didn't know if her plan would work, but she was in a novel world, so it should work. She realized the wolf was like a slow-motion video and figured out the best way to handle it in the spur of the moment. She lifted her foot and kicked the wolf, causing it to fly away and land lifeless on the floor. Elia was shocked at the impact she had made. Did she really kill the wolf with just one kick? Was she that strong? The boy behind her questioned whether the wolf was dead and she reassured him it was. Elia smiled as she turned, saying she was scared. When her gaze met the boy's, her eyes widened in shock. The young boy continued to thank her for saving him and offered to repay her, even if not now. Elia, still in shock, grabbed his shoulders and stared at him without speaking. Elia thought she knew very well that things couldn't be like this. She recalled a young boy she had known and she finally knelt in front of the young boy, still holding his shoulders, and called him Yun, questioning if it was really him. Elia was bewildered, believing the person she called Yun was right in front of her. She wondered how it was possible. Just then, all her thoughts were shattered as the young boy asked who Yun was. The young boy introduced himself as the Archduke of the Urbison Imperial family, Caleb Indigentia. Elia's eyes widened in shock as the puzzle pieces began to come together and she realized the young boy was from the novel about the parents. The young boy was the dark side of the novel she had read. 
Aaliyah had only one family, Yun, her butler, who suffered from a rare illness and was hospitalized frequently. Despite his young age, he endured treatment with courage. As a member of the national taekwondo team, she promised Yun she would wear a gold medal around her neck. Yun smiled brightly and mischievously, saying he looked forward to it. Time passed quickly while preparing for the Olympics, and the day she won the gold medal for her little brother, she was overjoyed because they no longer had to worry about money and she could finally afford to send him to the best hospital. They could finally live happily together for a long time, but unfortunately that was the day Yun died. Before he died, he wrote a will stating they should not tell his sister about him until after her match was over. She was utterly shattered when she finally found out. After losing Yun, she ignored all the reporters and journalists who came, wanting to avoid reality at all costs. She isolated herself totally and became an internet addict, spending all her time online, morning and night. One day she happened to see an advertisement while scrolling through her phone. It was a web novel titled, I Won't Let You Sleep This Time. When the photorealistic cover appeared, she couldn't take her eyes off it, especially the dark face among the people in the cover, which was almost identical to Yun's. She fell in love with the novel, and as she gazed at the cover, she felt a strong connection to Yun. Kalib, the dark character resembling Yun, was now standing in front of her. Kalib spoke, questioning whether she had mistaken him for someone she knew named Yun and whether that was the reason she had saved him. Realizing he was right, he apologized for disappointing her as he wasn't Yun. Elia was still in awe, as even his voice sounded just like Yun's. Kalib then spoke, telling her that he would make sure to express his gratitude and that as his benefactor, she should feel free to speak comfortably with him. Caleb began ranting in annoyance, saying that if he hadn't been hurt, he would have gotten rid of something like that right away with magic. Elia finally realized that he was injured and saw the blood dripping from his hands, widening her eyes in panic. Seeing her reaction to his injury, Caleb asked her to lower her voice, telling her that he didn't feel any pain and that it was not a big deal. Ilya almost succumbed to his words before she shook it off, asking how a wound could be insignificant when it was bleeding like that. She took his palm in her hands and after seeing it, noticed some red marks on his palm, wondering if it was from a previous injury. Saying she wouldn't allow this, she reached out for the edge of her sleeve with her teeth and tore a piece of it out, tying his palm with it. Caleb questioned her further and she continued with a smile, saying she lived in a small cottage over there. Caleb looked at his palm and one could see the countless emotions passing through his face as he thanked her. Ilya then stood up, pointing and heading towards the direction of the cottage, smiling at him. Just then, she realized that he had not only injured his palm, but also his legs. He had slightly sprained it when running from the wolf earlier. As she saw that his leg was lifted up a bit, she worriedly said it must hurt, making Caleb interject, saying it didn't hurt that much. In anger, Ilya scolded him, telling him that he was limping. And how could he say that it didn't hurt? She also reminded him that it was the same thing he had said about his palm earlier. Aaliyah then told him that if it hurt, there was no reason why he shouldn't tell her. Caleb bent his head in silence, making Aaliyah wonder what was wrong, feeling that he might have thought she was scolding him. But in truth, she was just saying this because she was worried. Caleb still remained silent, and as Elia stared at him, she came to a realization. The contents of a novel she had read came to her mind. She recalled that in the novel, Caleb was an undisputed loser, and for some reason his subordinates didn't like him. Nevertheless, Caleb always adhered to strict standards, maturely and perfectly, without disappointing those around him. Elia wondered why they hated Caleb. Well, she didn't know the reason, as it wasn't properly addressed in the novel, but because of those standards, she was sure Caleb felt a great disappointment while growing up. In truth, it was very cruel what Caleb had to suffer, even though he was still a child. Elia had told Yun not to worry, that she really didn't mind at all. She clenched her fist, got down on her knees, facing Caleb with her back, attempting to carry him on her back. Caleb was utterly shocked, and Elia explained that his leg was hurt, so she would give him a piggyback ride. But Caleb was still shocked at her gesture, making various reasons not to get on her back, questioning what she was doing as it wasn't a serious wound, and he said he could walk by himself. Elia then had a brief flashback of when Yun had told her that he could walk by himself and that he wasn't that sick at all. But it was a big deal for Elia. She kept seeing Yun and Caleb. 
She snapped out of it, acknowledging that he was okay, yes, but she wanted to do it for him, saying that she would carry him on her back. As Caleb wanted to disagree further, he suddenly retreated, saying that he would follow his instincts and finally got on her back. Caleb was still having a tough time, wanting to make another remark, but Elia interjected, saying that he should let her carry him and that she was very strong, but Elia knew that Caleb was not Yun. After getting to her cottage, Elia had patched him up. Finally, Caleb looked at his palm again, still wishing he had a wand so that he could have used magic right away on the wounded area. As they sat on the dining table, Aaliyah stretched her hands, offering him a cup of cocoa and saying she tried to get all the remaining cocoa powder but didn't know whether it would taste good. Caleb collected the cup and noticed that she had given him cocoa and had taken just water for herself. Raising his voice to thank her again, Aaliyah retorted that he didn't have to thank her for everything. It was bewildering to think that a little child like this would later make the world fall into the abyss of fear. Realizing this, Aaliyah closed her eyes, feeling somewhat stupid now as she wondered why she had gotten involved with him. Caleb was the darkest character in the novel's world, and she had pretended to be positive at best. She was really sorry, as she had to send him away once his injury had healed. Just then, his stomach growled, making Elia exclaim in panic, asking him why he didn't tell her that he was hungry, but Caleb interjected, saying that he wasn't hungry. This got Elia annoyed, as she told him to be honest and tell her when the last time he ate was. Caleb then replied, saying that he had been wandering in the woods since early that morning. In shock, Elia then told him to wait a little while, that she would make something for him to eat right away. Caleb rejected the offer, saying that he usually skips dinner, which got Elia feeling sad. Caleb continued to explain that if he ate dinner, his weight would increase and his appearance would look bad at his first public appearance, and that was why his literature teacher told him not to have dinner always. With a now saddened expression, he explained that he had been skipping dinner since last month. Elia was too dumbfounded, losing count of what Caleb was saying, now questioning whether his etiquette teacher really said that. Caleb just gave a nod, which put Elia in a state of rage as she began her rampage questioning whether they really made him go on a diet when he was still growing up. Were they really saying they starved Caleb, who was only six and seven years old? Elia, still in rage, began recalling when she had done the same, all in the name of her work. Realizing that for some reason he felt so light when she had carried him earlier. Finally snapping out of it, Elia stood up and told Caleb to wait for her. She went to the kitchen and picked up a potato, still lamenting that the etiquette teacher was a crazy. She stated her resolve that even if he was sent back, she would feed Caleb with lots of delicious foods and send him to the teacher. A few moments later, she had made lots of potatoes to be eaten, finally realizing that the only ingredient she had in the house was potatoes, making her cry silently. As she served the food on the table, Caleb was shocked, wondering how on earth she made so much food in such a short time, stating that it didn't look like magic. Elia smiled, telling him that she had gotten used to it because she lived alone. Finally, telling him to go ahead and try the food, Elia was wondering whether Caleb was still thinking about it. She silently wondered in rage, questioning how the teacher could ask a child to lose weight. Elia really wanted to go over to him, pick him up, and force him to eat, telling him that he shouldn't believe what they had told him. She wondered what on earth the etiquette teacher did. Caleb finally picked up the spoon, took a handful, and put it in his mouth. He commented that the pepper was somewhat strong, but okay. Elia thought he was cute and that it was worth eating. Elia now picked up a potato pancake from the table and stretched her hands to his mouth so that he could try it, also telling him that people usually crave it when it rains. Caleb stared at her for a brief moment and finally said he would eat it by himself, making Aaliyah tell him that nobody cared and that he should just go ahead and try it, stretching her hand further. He finally ate it. Elia asked him for feedback, making Caleb say that it tasted amazing and that he would remember it when it rains. The expression that Caleb now wore on his face was one of happiness mixed with sadness. Elia then told him not to eat too fast and that if he wanted more, she would make it for him if he wanted. She said that she would send him back quickly, but here she was planning for the both of them to go and get ingredients from outside tomorrow. The next morning, Caleb was sleeping very peacefully, but the next minute, his eyes opened wide, and he couldn't believe that he overslept, scolding himself, saying that if the schedule was delayed, he was forgetting that he was still in Elia's cabin. 
As he looked around, he finally realized that he was still with her. Snapping out of it, he thought that even if it wasn't the Grand Duchy, he shouldn't oversleep. But his tired body was now refreshed, and it was even more interesting because he couldn't believe that he fell asleep like that. Caleb hadn't slept in peace for a single day since that day. He looked really sad and scared as he was recalling the past. That's when Aaliyah's bright voice came in, asking whether he was awake. Hearing her voice, he immediately snapped out of the trance. He had slept so soundly that he couldn't even speak in the morning. He made his way to get up from the bed as he asked her where she had been. Elia replied that she went to buy groceries, smiling brightly as she told him that she would make some meat stew for lunch today. He wondered what that was as he cleared his eyes. Because she could kill a wolf with a single kick, she could heal injuries skillfully. She had a simple appearance, but it was dazzling. She didn't seem like an ordinary person at all. Besides, she was really good at cooking. Caleb was behind her, watching and analyzing her, when she turned back and saw him. She questioned what was wrong, making him exclaim. He bent his head down, feeling nervous. He wanted to know more about Elia, but he didn't say anything about himself. He then raised his head up, telling her that from tomorrow, she should wake him up. Caleb obviously wanted to change the topic. Elia was now wondering why he said that. Caleb continued, saying that he wasn't supposed to oversleep. Hearing this, Elia got angry and folded her hands, scolding and questioning him about how there was nothing he couldn't do right. She said that it was not like there was a separate schedule, and besides, what was wrong with a child oversleeping? Caleb was confused and just stared at her silently. He finally opened his mouth to tell her that he was the Grand Duke, not a child. Elia replied, telling him that this wasn't the Grand Duke's castle. She told him that until he returned to the Grand Duchy, he was just Caleb. Just Caleb, she said. Aaliyah replied, yes, just Caleb, placing her hand on his head and giving him a pat, telling him that if he wanted to sleep here, he should eat delicious food and have fun here too. She smiled widely, patting his head, making sure he understood. Caleb's eyes widened in awe. Aaliyah was strong enough to kill a wolf with a single kick. She was good at cooking and healing too. She was a really kind person. Realizing that she had patted his head unknowingly, she immediately changed the topic, asking whether they could now eat comfortably, making Caleb reply with, yes, just Caleb. He was now recalling the past lessons that he had received from his teacher. She had told Caleb that he was the Grand Duke and that he had to always act like an adult. His teacher told him that he was no longer a child, that she didn't feel comfortable either, but it was all for his sake. Caleb fist as if he was having an eternal battle with himself. He knew that he shouldn't do what Aaliyah said, he knew, but he wondered why he was so happy at her carefree remarks. He smiled as they sat down. Elia then apologized, telling him that they didn't have cocoa anymore. Caleb replied saying that it was fine still because he liked chamomile too. When they were done, Elia then asked Caleb for feedback on how the meal was and whether he liked it. Caleb replied acknowledging that the meal was nice. Making Elia exclaim in relief as Elia smiled brightly, Caleb gazed at her in awe, stating that Elia was amazing. Realizing that she was staring, she wondered whether it was because of the child named Yun. It was like someone she had known for a very long time. Caleb then spoke, saying that he wanted to know more about her, and that he would also tell her about himself too. She exclaimed in surprise as she realized that Caleb wanted to get closer to her. She wondered what she should do. Finally deciding to do her best while Caleb was there and also noting not to cross the line. Well, that's what she initially thought. She smiled genuinely and asked Caleb to tell her. She was also fine just listening to his stories. She didn't want to get involved more than she already was. It was about having a strong heart. He began saying that he actually had one elder brother. Ilya just knew then and there that she wouldn't be able to stop Caleb from turning black because as expected, he was telling her the story of his brother. The original story, I Won't Let You Sleep This Time, a name that anyone who had read it couldn't possibly recognize, Cedric Kedisel Indigentia. He was adopted by the Indigentia family at the age of 10, and at the age of 13, had perfected gravity magic. He was so powerful at the age of 18 years old that he even revived weather magic, which had disappeared 120 years ago. He had even broken the emperor's staff, the strongest person in the world was what he was called. After a brief introduction, no other information was revealed. Caleb began to tell Aaliyah about his brother. His older brother came into the family as the adopted son. 
Although they weren't related by blood, he liked and respected his brother very much. But last year, his eyes now turned sad as he said his brother was cursed. Cursed? Elia exclaimed in shock. Caleb continued saying that only the caster could lift the curse and he hadn't found the caster yet. It was a fairy's curse. Elia knew the curse was the reason why Caleb turned into a villain. In the original novel, the lady of the marine nest family, Daphne, and the prince of the Epicent Empire, Renoa, appear as the main characters, and that was the plot. One day, a fairy appeared in front of Renoa, saying that he would slowly put him into eternal sleep. The fairy tried to place a curse on him which would make him sleep forever, and at that time, Daphne appeared in front of Renoa. She protected him, deflecting the curse with magic, and with that moment, they slowly began to fall in love. And by the time it arrived, Daphne had already saved Renoa. Elia now realized that Cedric was actually cursed after all. Caleb said it was not like there was no way to stop the curse. He said if it's the Sanctuary of Knowledge, the Sanctuary of Knowledge is a place where all the knowledge in the world is located in the Imperial Palace of Epresent. Among the three families that are pillars of the Imperial family they were, Meshalats of body, Marine Nest of water, and Indigentia of gravity. It was a place where only authorized people could enter. Elia began remembering correctly that, forgetting their family lineage or becoming the head of the family, only those who swore loyalty to the imperial family could enter. It was really difficult. Continuing his story, Caleb said, the fastest way for his brother to enter the Sanctuary of Knowledge was to become the Grand Duke, but his brother was refusing to collect the Archduchy and was trying to install him as the Archduke. Caleb said his brother always told him not to worry, but he was worried that he wouldn't be able to break the curse, stating that they would be severe checks until he became the Grand Duke, and Caleb still had a lot to do, but he wanted to try his best to enter the Sanctuary of Knowledge just for his brother. Elia gripped her fist, as she couldn't tell Caleb that the day he becomes the Grand Duke will be the day that Cedric's condition will rapidly deteriorate. Flashback to the novel, Caleb had quickly arrived at the Sanctuary of Knowledge. He searched all the information that he could find, but not only did he not learn how to break the curse, but he couldn't even find a clue about the fairy. But one day, he heard a rumor that the fairy who placed the curse was captured alive by the Imperial family. Caleb rushed to the dungeon where the fairy was kept, but the only one who could lift Cedric's curse was already dead. Caleb, who watched this happen, thought that there was someone plotting within the Imperial family. He started to not trust the Imperial family and finally developed a deep hatred for them. Caleb was in total rage as he swore that for his brother's sake, he must bring destruction to the Imperial family. He made a contract with the Great Devil and dabbled in the forbidden black magic. After recalling the novel, Aaliyah realized that she could never actually stop Caleb and she couldn't change the future. Caleb was one of the main characters, a child who was completely different from her, a mere extra. The child was not Yun, but still. Aaliyah got up, deciding that so far Caleb was still in her cottage, she would encourage and show him love and support. She went to Caleb, giving him a heartfelt hug and encouragement as she told Caleb he could do it. He could become an Archduke and save his brother saying that if there was anything she could do, she would help as much as she could, making Caleb's eyes widen in surprise as he clenched her sleeves tight. They finally went to bed with Elia, cuddling Caleb. Weeks had passed, and they were living really happily, forgetting any other thing. They would cook together and take a walk together in the forest. Elia noticed that the frozen appearance Caleb had when she first met him had changed noticeably. He smiled more genuinely and was really at peace. His appearance that was always stiff had disappeared. Caleb, filled with joy, ran fast through the forest, making Aaliyah worry for his safety. And there were also more changes in Caleb's facial expression. He was now good at expressing his emotions as he picked up a bunny, smiling genuinely at it. Elia noted to herself that this was what a child was supposed to look like. Elia bent down, admiring the cute bunny as Caleb introduced it, saying that he met the bunny while taking a walk and that it was very gentle and seemed to be very good at following people. But Elia thought the bunny looked familiar, now recalling when she had met it, and it ran away. Immediately, the bunny hopped out of Caleb's hands and dashed away, making Elia wonder why the bunny always ran away when it saw her. Caleb guessed that the bunny didn't want to go back to the cabin. Elia interrupted him, 
saying it may be because she had approached it suddenly, making it surprised. Then she changed the topic, asking whether they could now go back and make some snacks. Hearing this, Caleb, with a bright smile, he stretched out his hands, stating that he wanted to go hand in hand with her. Elias smiled and took his hand as they began to go back to the cottage. It had already been a week. Caleb's wounds were healing, and in a few days, Caleb would return to the Grand Duchy. One week. As if Aaliyah had come to a realization, now that she thought about it, it really seemed a bit strange that so much time had passed. Wondering why Cedric hadn't come to find Caleb. Back at the Grand Duchy, where winter blazed, Cedric stood alone by the window, watching the frosts, as he wondered with a graceful look on his face where Caleb was. In the Grand Duchy, as Cedric sat on his chair in his office, a warning letter had arrived from the Imperial Palace. The chief advisor of the Indigentian Grand Duchy, Edwin Polinoa, had barged into Cedric's office, pleading for Cedric to stop the gravity magic. There was no reply. Edwin called his name again, saying that the castle gates were frozen and the vassals could not go outside. He said there were complaints that if the gravity magic continues, let alone the castle, the damage caused would be enough to affect the farmland on the outskirts of the capital. Cedric finally spoke, stating that he was controlling that on his own, making Edwin sigh in relief, saying that if that was the case, then he was glad. As Edwin wanted to continue voicing his complaints, Cedric spoke up, calling his name and saying that he should have made things clear. Finally, he told Edwin that if he wanted to stop the blizzard, he should go and find the Archduke Caleb with a stern gaze. He stated that it had already been a week, questioning whether he didn't think it was weird that they didn't even know whether Caleb was dead or alive, and yet the vassals were only concerned about the cold weather. Edwin had nothing to say, as Cedric's words had left him speechless. Cedric then told him to tell everyone again that they should bring Caleb to him as soon as possible, with his usual stoic expression, implying that whether or not the vassals froze to death before that was none of his business. Edwin acknowledged what Cedric had said and left. Left with his thoughts, Cedric wondered that even though the Archduke was missing, they were saying it was difficult just because of the cold. He hit his folded fist on the table in frustration because he didn't even know where Caleb was or what he was doing right now. He just closed his eyes and sighed. The Eternal Guilds with talented people and the information guild used by the Empress, yet still no trace of Caleb was found. Cedric pondered whether the only thing that was left was the Dark Guild. Where the hell was Caleb? He wondered frustratingly. Back at Elia's cottage, it was already night, and Caleb had just taken his bath. Elia told him to sit over there as he held a towel, dabbing his hair to get the water out. Elia smiled as she told him to put a bandage on his wound before going to bed. Caleb stated that it was okay because he had changed it the last time. Elia interrupted him, telling him that he had to change it often or else it would get worse. He then stretched his palm to her, surrendering the argument, looking at the wound. Elia smiled and said that the wound was healing well without any problems and she said that the wound would be healed in just a few more days. Caleb stared at his palm in silence and just when Elia turned to him to ask for an acknowledgement of what she had just said, she saw his gloomy face and was surprised, retracting and trying to explain her words, that she didn't mean he would go back to the Archduchy quickly. It was because she was really happy that his serious wound was healing. She feigned a yawn and told Caleb to go to sleep, as the air around was still very awkward. Caleb finally called her name, making her exclaim in confusion. His eyes looked sad, but he couldn't say what he wanted to say, and after some time, he told her not to mind. Elia's expression also held frustration and sadness, but she couldn't talk or do anything, so she finally told Caleb sweet dreams, making him respond the same. They were in their normal sleeping position where Elia would cuddle Caleb, but Caleb wasn't asleep. He lifted his injured palm, looking at it, then placed a finger on his chin in thought as he looked up at the ceiling. He pondered that, when his hands were healed and he could use magic, he would have to go back to the great castle, which saddened him deeply, and it was obvious. He clenched Aaliyah's sleeve and was having a flashback. He asked his brother, who faced him with his back, why he was doing it. Caleb yelled that becoming a Grand Duke proved that Cedric was loyal to his family, then he could enter the Sanctuary of Knowledge right away. He continued, telling his brother that even if he gave up the right to inherit the title of Grand Duke, 
Cedric then called his name Caleb, kneeling on one knee in front of Caleb and saying that he had said it before, he wouldn't become an archduke, that it was he who would lead the Indigentia family. Caleb replied, saying that it would take time before he became the Grand Duke, and he had to break the curse as soon as possible. Cedric then said that he told him not to worry because there was another way. Cedric said that he didn't have to worry about curses or the sanctuary of knowledge. He said to Caleb that all he had to do was think about what he wanted to do. As Caleb walked through the hallway, he overheard the maids gossiping about Cedric. One maid questioned whether Cedric was getting married while the other scolded her for being too loud and clarified that she only said he could get married. The first maid asked why Cedric was suddenly getting married, and the other replied, surprised, that she didn't know. The maid explained that Cedric had no clue about the curse and that the only option left was the Sanctuary of Knowledge. However, since he gave up his rights to succeed as the Grand Duke, the only other way was to pledge loyalty to the family through marriage. Caleb, who was hiding in the corner, was confused about what they meant by marriage. The maids continued saying that finding a spouse would be difficult due to a rumor circulating. One maid asked what the rumor was about, and the other replied that there was a rumor that the curse was contagious. Hearing this, Caleb gritted his teeth in anger, wondering if it was true and who spread such ridiculous rumors. The maid continued saying she didn't know if it was true, but everyone knew, and she felt anxious at work too. She questioned whether any lady would want to marry Cedric. Caleb realized that Cedric probably knew about the rumors and wondered why his brother never told him anything. Did Cedric really care about him? Or did he think Caleb was untrustworthy? Caleb didn't know anything and wished Cedric would be honest with him. He closed his eyes, imagining Aaliyah and Cedric getting along well and even getting married. His eyes flashed open as it dawned on him. Marriage. He reasoned that if it were Alia, wouldn't she help his brother if they got married? As a married person, Cedric would be able to prove his loyalty to the family, enter the sanctuary of knowledge, and even break the curse and divorce Elia if needed. If he revealed that he was Elia's supporter, they could stay together in the great castle and Caleb wouldn't have to feel lonely anymore. Time had passed and it was now early in the morning. Caleb couldn't sleep, thinking all through the night. He wondered what he was thinking and how he could think such selfish thoughts. He realized it was exactly why he was alone and decided not to cause any more trouble. When his hands were fully healed, he would return alone and quickly become the Grand Duke. The next day, as the sun exuded its rays so brightly, Aaliyah woke up with such energy, eager and excited. She asked Caleb what he wanted to eat for lunch, saying she would make it extra delicious. That was when she noticed how unresponsive and quiet Caleb was. Jane wondered what was going on, what was wrong. Caleb responded, saying with a dropped shoulder and saddened expression that he was fine with anything she prepared. Realizing she had been an idiot, she recalled that Caleb had been like that since he woke up, and she knew it was bad. Parting ways, Caleb headed to the table with his drooping demeanor to take a seat, and Aaliyah carried an empty pot and returned to her cooking station. Heading back there, Aaliyah made a mental note that she couldn't give in, remembering that there was nothing she couldn't do. Aaliyah turned around with a bright idea that she hoped would work. She told Caleb in excitement that she was thinking of making grilled salmon and potato stew for lunch, knowing that they were his favorites. She asked him if he could go help her pick some lemons. Still, with the same droopy demeanor, Caleb stood up in acknowledgement of the message and walked like he hadn't seen strength in days. Elia noticed his steps, saying that there was no strength in them, but maybe some fresh air would do him good. She wanted to take a stroll with him later on. The next minute the door was slammed and a cloaked stranger was now before them looking mysterious and mischievous. The air thickened and their heartbeats became faster. The cloaked man uttered, finally, reaching his hand to grab Caleb, saying that he had finally found him. Just as fast as he reached out to grab Caleb, Elia grabbed two pans and struck the intruder with one, making a loud bang on his head. Pans are so effective, she exclaimed. Elia immediately told Caleb to hide behind her, wondering who the cloaked man was. He was really suspicious. She gritted her teeth, ready to take the next action, trying to reason whether he was trying to kidnap Caleb. The next thing she heard made her freeze on the spot. Caleb was bent over the body, uttering, Big Brother? Caleb looked at the intruder's face closely, realizing that the intruder was Cedric. Caleb touched his arm, telling him to wake up. Elia, realizing how doomed she was, mumbled to herself, saying that the person she had really just hit with a pan was Caleb's brother, Cedric. 
On a closer look, she must have realized that he was actually too handsome to be a kidnapper. A few moments later, they had moved him to a bed. Aaliyah bent in guilt, apologizing to Caleb, saying that she should have asked who it was first, but her body had reacted instinctively. Meanwhile, Cedric had moved subtly, but no one had noticed it as they were still caught up in their conversation. Caleb knew it wasn't on purpose and that she was just surprised, saying that he was sure his brother Cedric would understand when they explained the whole thing to him. Caleb also calmed her mind, pointing out that Cedric was really strong, so a little lump like that wouldn't affect him. Aaliyah knew Caleb was trying to reassure her with all his might. Caleb intended to get some water and a towel to make a compress for Cedric, but before he left, he mumbled that he didn't expect Cedric to find him so quickly. Hearing the mumble, Aaliyah asked what Caleb had said, but he brushed it off, changing what he was saying to him getting the water from the spring and towels too. Elia appreciated his gesture and Caleb left. Elia stayed there alone with her thoughts and a concussed man. She had been certain that she heard him say something, but her thoughts were cut off as Cedric moved. Elia turned anxiously, realizing that she should have left Caleb here and gone to get the water instead. She got closer to him, wondering whether Cedric was talking to himself. As she saw how uncomfortable his clothes must have been, she stretched her hands in an attempt to loosen them. But before she could touch his clothes, Cedric grabbed her hands, glaring and asking what she was doing. Cedric squeezed her hands, calling her a pervert. Elia exclaimed in confusion. Pervert, she said. Elia froze, begging to be pardoned. Cedric asked what she hoped to accomplish by kidnapping Caleb, glaring down at her. Slowly understanding what he was saying, Elia stood up in anger. Cedric continued, saying it wasn't enough for her to kidnap Caleb. She also forced him to use his blackout magic so no one would find her house. He had some nerve to say all this. Elia waved her hands, trying to clear his wrong notion. She turned around, heading outside to get Caleb. Just then, Cedric used his magic on her, causing her to hit the ground with a thud. Gravity magic! He asked where she thought she was going and accused her of trying to run away. Elia realized that his intensity was no joke. From nowhere, a wet towel hit his face. Schlop! Caleb asked what he was doing with Elia. Caleb, my hero, she thought. He stood in front of her, telling Cedric to pull back his magic and apologize to her immediately, saying that Elia saved his life. The towel dropped to the floor. Schlop. Leaving his face dripping with water, Cedric was confused about how she had saved his life. Caleb explained that he was being chased by a wolf and Aaliyah rescued him. He would have been eaten by the wolf if she hadn't been there. Questioning in anger how Cedric could do that to his rescuer, Caleb said he was really disappointed in him. It finally dawned on Cedric and by that time he had subsided his magic and Aaliyah was free. Caleb turned to her, holding her hands in worry. Elia could see that he was stunned, but there wasn't much change in his expression. Cedric spoke, saying that if Caleb wasn't kidnapped or blackmailed and could use magic, then why didn't he return to the estate immediately? If Caleb could cast an aerial blackout, a quick teleportation shouldn't have been a problem. Done. Done. Done! Busted. Elia turned her head in shock and confusion at the fact that Caleb was using magic. She argued that his hands were injured when she checked yesterday, and she thought he couldn't use magic without his staff if his hands were injured. Caleb clenched his fist as he started crying and explained that he wanted to stay with her a little longer. He apologized for tricking her and continued, saying that it was true one couldn't use magic if their hands were injured. But this time, even though his hands were injured, he could still use his magic, strangely enough. Since he had to leave when he could use magic, he decided to hide it from her. Caleb finally asked if she was angry and apologized for lying to her. She dragged him into a tight hug, saying there was no way she would be angry with him and that he didn't have to apologize. Caleb started crying, and Aaliyah wiped his tears with a smile, reassuring him that it was all right. Elia couldn't believe that Caleb was crying because he didn't cry once in the original story. Caleb asked Elia if she was happy staying with him and whether she would be disappointed if she had to part ways with him. Elia replied honestly that she was indeed happy staying with him and would be very disappointed because they really had a fun week together. Caleb twisted his hands and widened his eyes like a little kid, asking her if she wouldn't come to his estate with him and if she wouldn't marry his brother. Realization struck both of them. After all the drama, Caleb was fast asleep. Elia almost sucked in all the air available as she was tired from all the drama. A lot had happened in a short span of time and her head was spinning. 
She held a hot cup of tea heading towards Cedric, also wondering if she should cook really fast as she needed to serve him something, anything. The next minute, Cedric walked into the kitchen shirtless and sat at the table. The glow on his body shocked Elia to the core. She understood that his shirt was wet, but wasn't he stripping too easily? It wasn't aristocratic behavior. Snapping out of it briefly, Elia walked towards him, dropping the cup of tea for him. As she got closer to him, she was entranced again. Seriously, where was the shine on his body coming from? His muscles and the sparkle on his body were so perfect that they blinded her. She didn't know where to look anymore. His body was even more perfect than the other athletes she trained with. Drool? Elia needed to calm herself down. As if hearing her thoughts, Cedric stood up and bent his head down, apologizing for his earlier rudeness. Elia rejected his apology, saying there was no need, because she had also bashed his head with a frying pan. Ha ha ha. But Cedric argued that it was to protect Caleb. Elia knew he was right, but still. She told him to have a seat first, handing him a piece of clothing to cover himself as the sparkle was too much and she had to look away. He took the cloth and wrapped himself with it. Phew, we can breathe now. As they sat down facing each other, Aaliyah recalled that Cedric was hardly in the original novel, and that made her curious about what type of person he was. The type to make you drool, ha 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 ha. Despite his sharp, stoic appearance, Cedric seemed warm and kind. Ellie remembered when Caleb had asked her to marry his brother and asked Cedric why Caleb suddenly brought up marriage. Inwardly, she wondered whether she could really ask the question. Cedric explained that it was because of the curse he was under. The fairy curse? Aaliyah replied, also wondering if there was some sort of connection. Well, there was. Caleb believed that the answer would be in the Sanctuary of Knowledge. The only way to enter the sanctuary was to become the head of House Indigentia, or to swear loyalty to the house. Elia wondered why he couldn't perform the ceremony and do so. Cedric replied that only the bloodline had the right to perform the ceremony. He said that he might be the eldest son, but he didn't have the Indigentia blood in him. However, once a person is married, permission can be granted to perform the ceremony, and then access can be given to enter the Sanctuary of Knowledge. Afterwards, Cedric told her that must be the reason why Caleb brought up marriage. Aaliyah understood, but it was still too complicated. Complicated? Cedric confirmed that Caleb really seemed to trust and rely on her a lot, and that it was the first time he had seen that side of him. In a bid to divert the conversation away from herself, Aaliyah mentioned that there must be countless ladies vying to marry Cedric. Still with his stoic face, Cedric disagreed, saying that there was a rumor his curse was contagious, so... Realization struck Elia when Cedric mentioned his curse being contagious. She wondered if it was in the book. Cedric assured her there was no need to worry, explaining that the rumor was intentionally spread to cause him harm. Knowing that, but yet still so calm, he concluded that Aaliyah was still concerned about it, so he said that when Caleb woke up, they would return to the castle immediately. Aaliyah recalled Caleb's confession that he wanted to stay with her a little longer. She asked Cedric why he was trying so hard to make Caleb the next Grand Duke. Cedric realized she was worried about Caleb. This was a reason for Aaliyah too, but she still wanted to know what Cedric was thinking. Cedric engaged in an explanation. Caleb was kidnapped soon after his birth for reasons they didn't know. His parents searched for Caleb for four years. When they received a report about an orphanage far from the castle, they headed there straight away, but only Caleb returned to the castle. Cedric's words reminded her of the novel, the assassination of the Indigentia family. On the way back from the orphanage, the carriage was attacked in the forest and everyone except Caleb was killed. It was the most terrible event in House Indigentia's history. She was sure Cedric had intentionally left out that part of the information. Some of the vassals had disapproved of Caleb ever since. They nonsensically said things like their parents ended up that way because they searched for their biological son when they already had him. It seemed there were other reasons, but with things the way they were, he couldn't reclaim the right to succession he had given up. Caleb had to become the Grand Duke to protect himself. Cedric believed it was better for Caleb to cultivate his own power because someone wouldn't always be there to protect him. Cedric ended by saying Caleb would be fine. Besides, there were other means aside from the sanctuary of knowledge. Hearing all the explanations to the end, Elia clenched her fist under the table. She thought to herself that Cedric may be a little clumsy in expressing himself. 
and she may not agree with his methods, but she could tell that Cedric wanted Caleb to survive. But Elia knew that Caleb would never have the happy life Cedric wanted for him. Elia was angry now as she clenched her fist, regretting why she had chosen to listen to him. She asked herself why she kept on doing that to herself, that there was nothing she could do even if she listened. She knew that even if Cedric and she got married and he could enter the sanctuary of knowledge, he would never be able to dispel the curse. But there was only one way. They had to find the fairy that cursed him and, in the next moment, Elia stood up hastily. Cedric questioned whether everything was all right. She scolded herself for not thinking of it sooner. She read the novel, so of course she should have known. A few days after Caleb became the Grand Duke, the Imperial Palace captured the fairy who had come to kidnap the heroine. Aaliyah reasoned, couldn't they just capture the fairy before they do and force her to dispel the curse? But Aaliyah didn't know what killed her, and it was too late once they captured her. She had to move faster than the Imperial Court, but to do that, she had to know what the fairy looked like. Elia recalled seeing her illustrations with her name underneath at the end of the novel, if she could just remember it. Cedric stood up, bringing her back to reality and asking if everything was all right. Abs! Abs alert! Focus, girl! You can do this! Elia said as she looked at Cedric. Surprisingly, she wasn't distracted by the shine and sparkle of his abs. She blurted out, I've found another way to get rid of your curse. Another way? Cedric looked confused. Elia was happier because she didn't have to get married and wouldn't have to get involved with the story. Just as she was about to tell him, she suddenly dropped to the floor, scattering the table. Cedric became worried, calling her name and wondering what had happened. He touched her shoulder, asking if she could hear him. Elia was too deep in thought to the point that she couldn't even hear him. How could I forget? She questioned herself. I had forgotten it because it only appeared once in the story. Silver hair that develops a pink flush as it grows, a pair of rare pink jeweled eyes. It couldn't be happening, Aaliyah said, mouth agape. The fairy that cursed Cedric was me? When Caleb woke up the next day, they told him the news, and he was the happiest kid ever as he heard that she was really going to marry his brother. Aaliyah smiled nervously, saying that she would be his sister-in-law and go back to the estate with him. Caleb turned to face Cedric, saying that it was great news. Indeed it was. Cedric said, looking unenthusiastic to her, but she knew why. The previous day when Aaliyah had spoken of another way, and when Cedric asked what the way was, she was forced to say they should get married, as she didn't want to say the real reason. Cedric was as shocked as anything by the sudden proposal. He felt no fluttering, just awkwardness. Aaliyah looked away and reviewed the situation once more. She was the root cause of everything. This meant she could dispel Cedric's curse and solve all the problems she had caused. But it was impossible for her right now because she didn't have any memories of Aaliyah. She only remembered her name and age. She didn't even possess the most basic knowledge of magic. It dawned on her that she couldn't do anything. Aaliyah always wore a dark hood over her head so no one knew what the fairy looked like. That was why Caleb didn't notice either. She had considered running somewhere far away, but the plot had already deviated significantly from the novel. If Caleb learned that she was the fairy he had been looking for. She pictured the scene of Caleb finding out she was the fairy all along, ending with him stabbing her. She trembled just thinking of it. Another problem was when Elia got locked in the Imperial prison, she died mysteriously. She wondered whether Elia suffered from an illness or if she was murdered by someone with a grudge. Finally realizing that whether she ran away or not, death awaited her, there was only one way for her to survive all these situations. After marrying Cedric, she would keep track of the curse's progress, finally cure Cedric, and leave for somewhere she could have a happier life. She clenched her fist in determination because she would finally be happy too, as would Cedric and Caleb. Aliyah was set on not getting involved before, but now that she knew she was the fairy, she had to resolve the situation somehow. Even if it was a novel, they had become real people to her. Cedric spoke to Caleb, reminding him that it wasn't a normal marriage. They had agreed to a contract marriage lasting until he was freed from his curse. Cedric said that once the curse was lifted, Elia would return to her home. Caleb understood, but was still sad. Elia thought he would be sad to know they would eventually part, but he was forcing himself to act fine. Her train of thought was cut short immediately, as Caleb said there was no reason for her to come back to her hut. He said she didn't have to leave the estate when they got divorced, 
that Aaliyah could just live with him. Aaliyah was confused. Caleb continued with a smile, saying that she needed a rank anyway, so he would formally become her patron as the next Grand Duke. Then she could stay with him under his patronage. Elia exclaimed, also noticing that Caleb had a different air about him. Cedric spoke, saying that it was difficult. He explained that while he could convince the vassals to let her stay, they needed to consider what Elia wanted. Caleb reacted in anger, arguing that Elia had already said she wanted to stay with but before he could complete the sentence, he realized that she hadn't said anything about that. They both glanced at her, waiting for her answer. After a brief moment, Cedric broke the silence and told Aaliyah they should find a different place to sit. She was confused by what he said. Cedric glanced at her, saying that they obviously needed to review the details of their contract. Intent on leaving, Aaliyah glanced at Caleb one more time, but his gesture surprised her. He stretched open his palm, gesturing for her to take it, and said, Let's go. Aliyah felt bad that Caleb had to grow up so quickly, but she was relieved by his reaction just now. In truth, it wasn't that she hadn't considered Caleb's offer. Elia was happy when she was with him and had grown fond of him, not just because he looked like her Yoon. Elia thought that if she could recall her memories, then she could remove Cedric's curse, stop her own death, and even prevent Caleb from becoming a villain and throwing the world into chaos. She knew that if she could stay beside Caleb after that, she would definitely be happy. However, everything that was happening now was because of her. Even though she had just possessed the body of Elia, it didn't change the fact that she was Elia now. She knew that. So how could she tell Caleb that she wanted to stay with him? It would be taking advantage of him, so she needed to give up the thought as soon as possible. At that moment, she needed to focus on the problem right before her, her new life in the Grand Duke's castle. They stood right before it. Aaliyah questioned in shock, why is the castle frozen? Cedric played the long story card. They made their way into the castle. Upon entering, Aaliyah was in awe. The castle was super glitzy and sparkling. They sat down in the living room opposite each other. The maid came to serve them. Aaliyah thought to herself that it was great they made it inside safely. But now that she thought about it, she didn't know anything about the estate. She wondered whether she could really pull it off successfully. As she sat and took her cup of tea in hand, Cedric mentioned a meeting with the vassals, leaving her shocked as beads of sweat formed on her face. Cedric replied that Caleb had returned to the castle and he had to inform them of their marriage situation as well. Elia understood but was still nervous. Cedric continued, saying there wasn't anything on the itinerary today regardless. He advised her to go back and rest in her chamber, saying that if she waited right where she was sitting, her lady-in-waiting would come and take her to her room. Aaliyah was shocked to hear that she had a lady-in-waiting. A man leaned in behind Cedric and whispered something. Cedric nodded in acknowledgement, saying he would be heading to the meeting and if there was anything Aaliyah needed. Before he could finish the sentence, Caleb interrupted, telling him to wait and declaring that he would also attend the meeting. Everyone was shocked at Caleb's statement. Aaliyah realized that in the original story, Caleb never attended a single meeting with the vassals until after Cedric fell into a deep sleep. Caleb spoke again, telling Cedric to take him along. Cedric glanced at them, reasoning that Caleb might have been just a child back at the hut, but not anymore. Aaliyah had rescued him from death, looked after him, and even granted his unreasonable request. That was why this time, Caleb knew he couldn't avoid it forever. He wanted to keep Aaliyah safe until the estate became a place she could stay. Elia looked at him with adoration. Cedric realized how much courage Elia had given Caleb, but he knew it had only been a few days. As they turned to leave, Caleb turned back and waved to her with a wide smile, saying he would be back. Elia was certainly a bit worried, wondering whether Caleb would be okay. She wanted to stay by his side, but couldn't really attend the meeting, realizing that he had Cedric with him, so he would be fine. Her thoughts were interrupted as a lady entered the room and bid her pardon, introducing herself as Olivia and saying she would be serving her from now on. Olivia bent her head down in respect, and when she was done, she lifted her head and gave a bright smile, also saying that she was in Aaliyah's care. Elia replied that she was also in her care. Aaliyah still couldn't believe she had a lady in waiting. She told Olivia that there was no need to be formal with her. Olivia smiled nervously, saying it was nothing and that it was more comfortable for her. Elia asked Olivia whether the meeting with the vassals had already started. Olivia replied that the meeting had started a little while ago. Elia was extremely worried about Caleb. 
As Caleb was seated amongst the vassals, murmurs were flying across the room. Then a man, House Indigentia's Marquis Reynold Babylon, slammed his hand on the table, yelling that he didn't understand what the Lord was saying. This is Frysen's empire's only grand duchy, Indigentia. He argued how some woman of unknown origin could be Cedric's partner. Cedric could be the next head of the house, and it was absolutely preposterous. Cedric glared at him in disgust, telling him to watch his mouth, reminding him that the heir to House Indigentia is Caleb, yet he referred to Cedric as the next head of the house. Cedric adopted a more serious look, saying Elia is his beloved, and that he should think hard about the next words that come out of his mouth, shrieks, the way he says beloved. Marquis Reynolds flinched in fright as Cedric spoke, telling them that the purpose of the meeting was to inform them not to seek their approval. Cedric continued, saying that they would be arranging the wedding plans as soon as possible and that the vassals should keep it in mind. A chilling silence filled the room as the vassals had inward conversations. They remembered how Cedric had made a snowstorm happen with his weather magic when Caleb was missing and wondered what kind of crazy stunt he would pull if they objected. Try and see, why don't you? Ha 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 ha. At worst, they acknowledged that they could get rid of the commoner. There have been times when people have remarried for the sake of their house after being widowed, so it wouldn't harm the Grand Duke's reputation. Marquis Reynolds clenched his fist in anger, saying it was ridiculous. He knew his plan would be ruined if Cedric suddenly found someone to marry. Marquis Reynolds Babylon, the older brother and only sibling of the previous Grand Duchess Edisel Babylon, was essentially an uncle to Caleb and Cedric. Following the assassination of the Grand Duke and Duchess Indigentia, he failed to become the actual second in power of the house. However, once Cedric became cursed, Reynold began to make new plans. First, he spread strange rumors so that Cedric won't get married. His rumors suggested that the curse would spread to nearby people, and even without evidence, people kept their distance out of fear. After that, he planned to get rid of Caleb by making a false allegation or framing him for some other crime. As the most powerful vassal, Reynold could influence the other vassals and turn public opinion. Since his daughter Zeril was Caleb's etiquette teacher, it was more than possible. Following that, under Reynold's leadership, Cedric would be made the Grand Duke. Once Cedric's curse worsened and before he fell into an eternal sleep, Reynold planned to make Cedric marry Zeril under the guise of removing the curse. Marquis Reynold Babylon could become the ultimate authority in Indigentia, the peasant who suddenly appeared had ruined everything for him. He wondered how she could not be afraid of catching the curse. At this rate, if Cedric really entered the sanctuary of knowledge and learned about Caleb's past, Reynold clenched his hands in fear because he knew he would be truly finished. Cedric spoke, saying Elia wasn't familiar with the ways of nobility yet, so until the wedding plans were set, she would attend etiquette class with Caleb. Marquis Reynold almost lost it. Please lose it, Marquis Reynold yelled asking Cedric if he thought Zeril graduated as valedictorian from the academy just to teach a peasant like Elia. You're the peasant, crazy fellow. He slammed his hand on the table, emphasizing that it was the grand house of Indigentia's etiquette lesson. How could a... But before he could finish, Caleb had gone mad due to him calling her a peasant. Caleb spoke in anger, questioning if he actually called her a peasant. Marquis Babylon flinched, wondering what was happening. Caleb usually had his tail between his legs, yet now Marquis Babylon felt intimidated by him. Caleb glared at him, saying it would be best if he watched his words. Elia was his sister-in-law and the Grand Duchess of Indigentia. Tell him, Caleb. As they exchanged glares, Marquis Reynolds smirked, knowing that woman was very important to him. The other vassal members had already come to terms with it, and Marquis Reynolds knew he couldn't stop it. The brainless fools taking Marquis Reynolds' bribe wouldn't be of help anymore, so he decided to turn it into an opportunity. His plan was to chase Aaliyah out of the castle. Meanwhile, Aaliyah had just gotten to her room and sat on the bed. Done! The bed was so soft she was shocked, making Olivia pleased. Here we are, worrying about her, and she's carried away by the bed. The next morning, the birds were chirping. Aaliyah had gotten up and was facing a mirror. She looked at herself in awe wondering whether she was allowed to be that pretty as soon as she woke up, touching her face slowly. Oh gosh, this girl. She even ate late, so she wondered where all the bloating was. She was stunned as she got closer to the mirror, holding her face, wondering if it was because of all that expensive-looking care she got before she slept. It was also kind of random, 
but her eyes really looked like polished gems. There was a knock on the door, finally drawing her attention away from the mirror. It was Olivia telling her that her meal was ready. Elia replied, stating she was awake. Olivia entered, pushing in a food cart. Elia's mouth dropped wide open. It was only breakfast, yet it was so fancy. As she dropped the cart, Olivia told Aaliyah to call her when she was done because Cedric was looking for her. Aaliyah was somewhat surprised that Cedric was looking for her. Dropping the cart, Olivia asked if there was any cloth or hairstyle Aaliyah preferred. Elia, being totally lost, scratched her face in awkwardness, saying anything was fine. She needed nothing over the top and could even get herself ready. Olivia was stunned, but also living in her own fairy tale. She clasped her hands together, looking up and sparkling. Seriously? Where are all these sparkles coming from? She asked what Aaliyah was talking about. She was going to see her husband, making it known that Aaliyah could count on her. Elia was nervous at the fact that Olivia looked excited. You're about to be dolled up, girl. In Cedric's study, a knock came in, and Olivia announced that she had escorted Elia to him. Cedric remained focused on the documents in front of him and said, Come in. Elia stepped in cautiously, her heels clacking. Cedric still maintained focus and apologized for the early hours, asking if she had a good rest. Elia replied with a smile that she enjoyed her rest and that the bed was really big. She rolled around a lot through the night. There it was again, the sparkle, ha 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 ha. Cedric was glad to hear that she approved of the chambers. He lifted his head, saying he would finish up soon, so please, but dump Cedric froze in place, seeing the transformation. They stared at each other for a few moments, Elia wondering what the matter was. Cedric finally gathered himself and completed his statement, asking her to have a seat on the sofa and wait for him. Elia accepted instantly and went to have her seat. As she sat, she wondered why Cedric froze up for a moment when he saw her, wondering if it was just her imagination. Not your imagination, girl! There was a cough beside her as if to get her attention. Elia turned her head and a gentleman bowed in courtesy, asking for the space to introduce himself. His name was Edwin Polinor and he was Lord Cedric's chief advisor at her service. Elia smiled in recognition, knowing he was the person from yesterday. She then told him she was also at his service with a bright smile. What does she mean, cries in tiredness? Edwin blushed. Boy ye, your head will soon be on the line. He said the reason he came to see her was because... Cedric stomped his foot, saying a stern no, and that he would tell her himself. Someone is quite jelly, ha 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 ha. Edwin was immediately snapped out of his daydream and scurried away, saying he understood and that he would return to his seat. Elia laughed inwardly, calling him Sir Tomato, thinking he had naturally flushed skin. The next minute, Cedric snapped his fingers and a bright, sparkling blue light appeared all around them. Elia gazed at it in awe, asking what it was. Cedric told her he had created a barrier so they could talk without being overheard. Cutting to the chase, Cedric asked if anything had come back to her yet. Elia was confused. Cedric spelled it out, asking about her lost memories. A finally understanding what he meant, she laughed awkwardly, saying nothing had changed. Elia told everyone she had lost her memories for now. She knew it was suspicious, but it couldn't be helped for now. It was true she didn't have any memories of friends, family, or anything relevant to herself. They agreed to keep it a secret from everyone else in the estate. She was lucky Caleb believed her, but she craved to know what Cedric was thinking. Cedric slid a document on the table, saying that in order to make the wedding plans as quickly as possible, they had to come to an agreement. He had drafted a contract yesterday. Elia picked up the document in amazement. He really drafted all of that in a day. He wrote down the duration as three years but he said he would like the contract to automatically extend should the curse not be removed within those three years. He reasoned that it would be good. Cedric told her he budgeted three billion gold per month for her use. Three billion what? He said she could use it freely, but she should also remember to keep a record in the ledger. Elia knew he probably meant she shouldn't try to squirrel anything away. Cedric told Elia that if she needed additional funds, she should let him know because the budget was flexible. Elia counted the zeros in the document, and after realizing how much it was, she shrieked in shock, her voice cracking with surprise. Cedric looked at her in confusion and asked if it was enough. What do you mean if it's enough? Take me, Lord Cedric, take me! In what world? Elia thought. If three billion gold is three billion one, she reasoned that she could have gotten a house and more in her previous life. She pondered why he was giving her so much. 
Elia glanced at him briefly, knowing that nothing in the document looked bad to her, no matter how much she scrutinized it. Finally speaking, she asked if that was the cost of her silence. Cedric responded that it was included. Also, she wondered. Cedric told her that it was also the settlement amount for her freedom. She was shocked. He told her to look at section six on the second page, which stated that when she moved about, she must be accompanied by himself or Caleb. Elia acknowledged it, knowing it was for her protection. Phew, and here I thought it was going to be something worse. In other words, she couldn't leave without Cedric or Caleb. It finally dawned on her, and she looked up at Cedric, wondering what he was saying. Cedric also mentioned that he would put together a group of knights for her protection, and that every staff position would be filled by those loyal to him, stating that they would be his eyes and ears. Elia realized that what Cedric was saying was that as long as she was in the estate, she would be under constant surveillance. Silence filled the room with the tense air all around. In the next minute, Elia gave an instant happy response, saying she understood, facepalm. I actually expected more from her. Even Cedric was confused by her response, wondering if she was actually okay with having her freedom restricted. Elia answered instantly, saying it was fine. She explained that she couldn't provide any confirmed information about herself, and if he was monitoring her to trust her, there was no reason for her to refuse. It made perfect sense that he was suspicious of her, not to mention that she was used to constant surveillance. Cedric was at a loss for words, staring at her. He looked down and seemed a bit shaken, finally asking whether she was done reviewing the contract. She replied instantly, saying they could proceed as it was. Cedric told her to let him know if there was anything else she wanted to add, that he would take it into consideration if it was reasonable. Elia thought about it. In truth, it was already a well-written contract and she didn't know what to add. She couldn't believe he wrote it in a day. According to the contract, once Cedric's curse was removed, she would get three billion gold, which she could use to buy a house somewhere in the country and live a comfortable life on her own. After thinking for a bit, she realized something and told Cedric she would like to make an addition. She told him that even after they divorced, she would like to regularly come and visit Caleb at the castle. Cedric was surprised at what she said. Elia continued, explaining that he shouldn't misunderstand her. She explained that when she saw Caleb, it always felt like her lost memories were coming back to her slowly. She wondered if maybe he resembled someone very important to her. She pressed the document, understanding that it might not be possible. Cedric just said he understood, causing Elia to look up in surprise. Cedric mentioned he would check with Caleb first, and if there were no objections, he would include it in the contract. Elia agreed, beaming with happiness, and thanked him. Cedric snapped out of it and said they would set another day to meet up later. Elia left the room and as she shut the door, there was a silence around her. She bent her head down quietly. The next moment, she was beaming with happiness thinking that while it wasn't what she initially wanted to do, she was totally happy about it. Her goal was to solve all the issues and live a quiet, solitary life. She had thrown caution to the wind and was very happy about her decision. In the middle of her talking to herself, Olivia called to her from behind, making her freeze. Olivia asked if anything was the matter because she was clenching her fist. Elia quickly changed her demeanor, flailing around and saying it was nothing. She reasoned that it was selfish of her, but she laughed, thinking it couldn't hurt to see him just a little bit every now and then. She moved along, saying just a little bit, a little bit, so no one noticed. After she was gone, Cedric grabbed the document and stood up, staring at it, recalling how she accepted having her freedom restricted so readily. Edwin came in, asking if Lady Aaliyah was so beautiful as he clasped his hands together. His eyes were sparkling as he said he had never seen such mesmerizing eyes before. He was really looking for trouble. And the lion was going to bite. Ha 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 ha! Cedric turned around, dropping the document on the table as he explained that they were called jewel eyes and were rare even among fairies. He suspected it was something like that. Edwin questioned if it would make Lady Aaliyah a fairy. As nonchalant as ever, Cedric dismissed the idea, saying where would one find a pure fairy these days? She was probably from a mixed bloodline. Edwin said he believed she was a pure fairy. Her eyes were beautiful, but the long locks on her head really suited her well, and her voice was like silver. You're pushing it, Edwin! Before he could say another word, Cedric glared daggers at him. If eyes could kill, ha 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 ha! Changing his statement, Edwin quickly adjusted his demeanor, making Cedric approve of his sensible judgment. 
Edwin pondered whether Cedric was actually jealous. It was a contract marriage, so he reasoned it was impossible. Or did he treasure her because she would dispel the curse? Lord Cedric really hated people looking over his things. Edwin made a mental note to be really careful, as he wanted to live a long life. You'd better, ha 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 ha. In Cedric's mind, he considered what Edwin had said, realizing he was right. Cedric thought Aaliyah was dazzling even when dressed humbly back at the hut, but she was as beautiful as a pure fairy when she dressed up. He didn't know her identity, but he saw that she was a bright and expressive person. He knew at a glance that she was completely different from him. Meanwhile, back in her room, Elia was still looking at the amount on the document, recalculating how shocked she was when she saw it, to the point that she had briefly lost her voice. She gasped and laughed. Cedric was still thinking about it when he let out a smile. Busted! Ha 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 ha! Edwin had caught the smile just in time, and Cedric knew he wouldn't hear the end of it. Edwin taunted him, asking whether it was a smile he just saw. Edwin pestered him to answer, finally saying he couldn't remember the last time he saw him as a loud quiet resonated from Cedric, along with a pile of documents hitting Edwin, cutting him short. Cedric said that he promised Caleb to have lunch with him, telling Edwin to organize the documents before he gets back. Edwin shouted, Sir, in acknowledgement. It was his punishment for being so nosy. Cedric left, and Edwin felt gloomy being alone and was given a punishment. As Cedric walked through the hallway, he was lost in thought, stating that they had finished the contract, so now they just had to move forward with the wedding plans. It felt like everything was going smoothly, yet he was nervous. It felt like the calm before the storm. Cedric recalled that he had smelled something floral about her, pushing it aside and saying he was imagining things. He had already lost his sense of smell because of the curse, so he couldn't possibly smell anything. During lunch with Caleb, Cedric had told him what Aaliyah had requested. Caleb widened his eyes in shock that she had requested that. Cedric confirmed it again, saying that even after the curse is dispelled and they divorce, she said that she would like to come visit him here at the castle. Caleb reasoned that if she wanted to see him after the divorce, did it not mean that she wanted to stay with him longer? He stated that she might not have been able to reply immediately at the hut because he caught her off guard. He reasoned that if he could do a little more of whatever it took, he would really be able to keep Aaliyah at the castle after she divorced Cedric. Caleb smiled and agreed to her request. Obviously, he would agree. Cedric acknowledged it with a smile and said they should confirm the post-contract details together later. They continued their meal. Cedric recalled a question and asked Caleb whether his etiquette lessons start back up tomorrow, saying that Aaliyah would be joining him. Caleb flinched and paused, realizing he had to focus once more, but he stated that he was going to work even harder since Aaliyah was joining. Cedric noticed the sadness on Caleb's face and wondered why he looked sad. He thought Caleb would have been happier since he got to have lessons with Aaliyah, whom he was fond of. Caleb was fidgeting. Elia stepped outside, where the sunlight highlighted every corner and the weather was so nice. She was so happy to go for a walk with Caleb on such a nice day. Initially, Elia thought she might have been too reckless coming to the castle, but everyone had been so nice to her. She felt really lucky. It had only been a day since Elia arrived at the castle, so she hadn't met the problematic vassals yet. She was determined to find out what kind of people they were, the evil kind. She imagined how they might bully or belittle her and hoped it wouldn't be like that, though she doubted it because of the rumors of the curse. Now she just needed to recall Elias's memories somehow. As Aaliyah turned a corner, she heard voices and saw the maids gathered, seemingly gossiping. They mentioned seeing the young master and Lord Cedric having lunch together for the first time in a long while. Elia thought they must be discussing something bad, so she decided to take another route. She overheard another sentence about it still being as suffocating as ever. She stopped and decided to eavesdrop on their conversation. Of course, it was just too tempting. The maids discussed how the brothers didn't seem to have a bad relationship, so why were they always awkward with each other? They're brothers! They mentioned that Caleb and Cedric briefly discussed Lady Aaliyah during lunch, and then there was complete silence the rest of the time, which was hard to watch. Aaliyah was shocked to find out that Caleb and Cedric were awkward around each other. She recalled from the novel that they were described as having a good relationship throughout the book. She realized that earlier at lunch, when she suggested they must be enjoying their time together, Olivia had asked why she was eating separately. 
Initially trying to make friends with Olivia, Ilya didn't want to interrupt a pair of close-knit brothers having a good time together. Close-knit? Olivia exclaimed. Elia didn't understand what she meant at that point, but now it all fell into place. Elia wondered whether they had a problem that she didn't know about. And this is where this part of the story ends. If you want the next part, please comment the name Elia.